don't remember who this is by. The March, the March of March. Mm-hmm. The last... everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with my March wrap-up for 2023, part two. I read a total of 11 books. If you are interested in the first five that I read, I'll leave part one down below for you to check out. But without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I have, we're going to start off with a bang, is Send in the Clowns by Molly Lakovich. I said it right, I think. I always say her name wrong. But I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. I am obsessed with everything Molly has ever written, and I will continue to be obsessed with anything Molly writes because I just think she is such a fun author. But this one follows Bunny Reed, who attends a pop-up circus with her roommate one night. This show ends up changing her life forever when the clowns, Spencer, Eddie, and Alex, take a little interest in her. Like I said, at this point, we should just assume that anything Molly writes, I am going to give a 5 out of 5 stars because it is just chef's kiss every time to me. Her writing is just extremely witty and you will find yourself laughing out loud from the banter between her characters. She also has a way of writing extremely unlikable characters. I'm looking at you, Alex. I hate him. But you still want to read about them because they are so intriguing. She also discusses deeper topics in this, particularly regarding trauma and what that looks like in different people. She does it in such a masterful way that it not only pulls at your heartstrings, but it also makes you deeply resonate with what she's saying. As always with Molly's writing, the spice is spicing, and I highly recommend that you pick up this book and you send in the clowns because it is just so freaking good. The next book I have is The Writing Retreat by Julie Bartz, and I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows five aspiring authors who attend a one-month writing retreat at well-known writer Rosa Vallow's estate. Alex has been experiencing writer's block for about a year now after the fallout between herself and her best friend, Ren. When she receives the invite to this writing retreat, she is ecstatic until she finds out that Ren also received an invite. When they arrive, they have to quickly get used to Rosa's unconventional methods and complete a project within the month period in hopes of getting published. I personally thought this was so much fun. All of the characters are extremely unlikable, but I really loved learning about their unique personalities. You could really feel the tension and animosity between these women and it set up for a great atmospheric read with a wonderful setup. I do think that the story was a bit slower paced at the beginning but it definitely went full throttle by the end of the book. I will say that the ending was a little bit wild and didn't make all that much sense but I still dug it so... I'm not mad about it. This definitely did not feel like a debut novel to me and I am definitely intrigued to pick up more of this author's work in the future, so I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is Confessed by Colleen Hoover. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows Auburn, who lost her first love at the age of 15. At 20, she moves to Texas in the hopes of starting a new chapter in her life, and that's when she meets Owen Gentry, who owns his own art studio, and she ends up working for him. She quickly realizes that she is quite attracted to him, and things kind of develop from there. I actually read this in one sitting. I mean, I did have COVID, so I couldn't go anywhere, but it was a very addictive read. I was not the biggest fan of Auburn. She was all right, but I do wish that she had more of a backbone and stood up for herself. I thought Owen was an okay character, but I found it very weird that he kept going on and on about how he deserved Auburn. Like, I don't even really know what that means. Like, what do you mean you deserve her? Because you don't seem to be all that good of a person. So. One thing I really did like about him though was his artwork. It sprinkled out throughout the story. I loved how it was connected to confessions that people wrote to him. I think that that was a really cool tie-in. I also really like how the story ended to a flashback of how Owen got into painting. I think that that was really creative. The biggest complaint about this book that I do have though is the constant victim and slut shaming in this book. I just can't get behind it, which is why I gave it a lower rating of three stars. Next up, I read Legends and Lattes by Travis Valdry. I finally read this book and I totally understand the hype. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. This follows an orc named Viv who decides to put her life of battle behind her and open the first ever coffee shop in a small little town. In order to make this plan a success, she decides to enlist the help of a few locals to get the shop up and running, and it's kind of the story of where that goes. This is another one that I read during my little bout of COVID, and to say that this was what I needed 
to lift my spirits is an understatement. It was so warm and fuzzy and cozy feeling. I just loved every single second I spent with these characters. Thimble is definitely by far my favorite. I just thought he was the cutest little bean in the entire world and I love how he just added new pastries onto the menu every morning. I honestly just want a thousand spin-offs with Cal, Thandy, and Thimble. It would make me so happy, so Travis get on that writing. I am a big sucker for the found family trope and I think that this was a perfect example of why I love it so much. I also really enjoyed the slow burn romance between Viv and Thandry. I just thought it was so precious and I really loved watching them grow together. It was just such a pure and wholesome story and I definitely recommend this to anybody who has not picked it up by now. It is so worth it. Five out of five stars. Next up I read Elixir by Hilary Duff and I gave it a 2.5 out of five stars, which I expected, but I'm still sad about. So this follows Clea, who after the sudden disappearance of her father, she will stop at nothing in order to find him. She is looking through old photographs from her recent vacation when she notices a strange man in every single one of them, so she enlists the help of her good friend Ben to try to figure out who this man is and if he may have a connection to her father's disappearance. I'm not gonna lie, I literally only bought this book because my girl Hillary was the author. And I'm not going to say it was a bad book, but I'm also not going to say it was a good book. I do think that the concept was fun and the whole idea of the elixir of life was interesting, but I do think that it could have been executed a little bit better. I just found it so predictable that it definitely did take away from the enjoyment of the story for me. I also just wasn't a fan of the love triangle or either relationship that Clea found herself in, so that kind of made it hard to root for either one of them. I also wasn't the biggest fan of the ending and do wish that it had been different, but that may just be me. But yeah, it was not exactly my cup of tea and I ended up giving it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. The last book that I picked up for the month of March was Lucy Foley's The Paris Apartment. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. So this follows Jess who, needing some time away from her life, she decides to jet off to Perry to visit her older brother, Ben. When she arrives, she realizes that Ben is missing, so she decides to ask the occupants of this apartment if they know Ben or where he may have gone to. Jess quickly realizes that there is some information being withheld and secrets being kept, and so she decides to investigate further, and it's like the story of that. I really wanted to like this book, but I found it to be so stinking boring for the majority of the story. It really didn't pick up in pace until the last 25% of the book. I did I did like how the story all came together in the end, which is why I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars instead of the 2 that I was originally contemplating. The chapters were quite short and I did enjoy the multiple point of views. I think that that definitely helped keep my interest in the book, but the slow pace was just too much for me and it was just really boring in my opinion, so 3 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so those were the final books that I read for the month of March 2023. If you are interested in the first part of this wrap-up, I will leave it a link down below for you to check out. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!